Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Zero, and welcome to Tim's Birthday. Tim's Birthday is a horror visual novel about making sure Tim has a great day. The features include instance of gore as best as we can, hell no. No, enable gore. What a crazy night. Anne and her friends had a blast at the club. They parted so hard and got super drunk. After a long night with her friends, the four of them are on their way home. And then she was telling me about how she wanted to make babies. It was crazy. She must have been wasted, bro. George is gonna die so hard. He's a stoner of the group. They always die. Hey, I actually know that girl from school. You do? Yeah, totes. I've seen her in the hallways. Oh god, totes. That's a breed unfortunate. She's a horrible mess. Don't harbor her that much. The car went silent for a moment. Hey. Did you guys see something on the road? No. Why? I, uh... I think it ran it over. Rach, that's totally screwed up! I can't... Rachel, are you okay? I can't do this. I really can't think. Rachel? Rachel looks as if she's getting really tired. She screams. Ouch. Calm down. She moved around as she was possessed by some demon. With all concerns, Anne tries to help her. She loses control of the wheel. The car crashed. We found out this was some kind of anti-drinking and driving commercial. And suddenly, Anne wakes up from her nightmare. Don't drink and drive, you'll end up in a horror visual novel. Kids. She got up too fast and suffers from her hangover. It was just a dream. Thank God, she says to herself. She barely pulls herself out of the bed. She makes her way to the bathroom and washes her face. She stares at herself in the mirror. She appears to be very tired. And she lumps her way to the kitchen. The door to her brother, Timothy, was creaked open. She stares at him jumping around for his big exciting day. A cat birthday party. Cat birthday party? She smiles and proceeds to enter the kitchen where her mother is brewing some coffee. She asks for some and has a seat at a small table in the kitchen. What happened last night? You look like a mess. Just with my friends. She gives Anne a subtle look. You can't lie to me. I know exactly what you did. Mom, just don't tell Tim. She slides her fingers across her mouth as she's closing a zipper. He can't know that I'm legally drinking. That'd be awful. After Marge passes Anne her coffee, Anne stumbles her way back to her room. She sits on her bed, sipping her coffee slowly. She looks around her room and notices how messy it is. Anne sat there while the party guests come in one after another. She still struggles to recover from her hangover. She drank more water. A knock on the door, halfway through the party. She reaches for the doorknob to open the door to Timothy. Where have you been? Oh, um, it's a bit noisy out there, you know? I wanted you to be there for my birthday. Sorry, little bro. Once the peeps leave, I'll come see you, all right? Come on now. Hangover can't be that bad enough you can't go for someone's birthday and be like cordial. Tim? He leaves. She wasn't sure what to do about it, so she had to go check on him. She took a moment to prepare herself. She stood outside the living room door and peeked in to check on Tim. Tim sat in the middle of his friend group looking very upset. They are trying to cheer him up by giving him cats to pet. Oh, that's what a cat birthday party is. That's... Both creative and weird at the same time, Nian. Anne steps into the living room. The lights trickled off. The sounds of children screaming. How did the lights turn off? Anne desperately looks for a way to turn the lights back on. Halfway down the hallway, the lights turn back on. <laughs> Suddenly a louder scream comes from the living room. Oh, everyone, calm down. Inside voices. Not only with children, but an adult, too. Anne hurries to the living room and... She stood there, 
looking down at the center of the living room. She looked down at what happened to be Tim's body. He had no color. He looked as if he was strangled and was out of oxygen for hours. Em lets out a loud scream. She stood there shaking. She can barely hold herself up. This is what happens when you have gimmick birthdays. She tries to hold herself up by grabbing the wall, but she falls down and froze up. She's overwhelmed with despair. She can't hear anyone around her, and her vision gets blurry. She passes out in her vomit. She wakes up from bed suddenly, once again hung over and holding her head up. Two nightmares in a row. Oh god, it's Groundhog Day. And deja vu. She recognizes that everything appears the same in the room. I have technically have nightmares in a loop like that. My max limit is 20 nightmares loops in a row. That's my record right now. She's being a bit skeptical, but she continues her day. And gets her coffee. Sitting in her room. And having Tim knock on her door. They have the same conversation as the one from the dream. But this time she doesn't feel the same. So she follows him to the living room. Tim is upset, so she tries to cheer him up. Shortly after, the lights flickered off. The ki screams from the kids, like the from the dream. Anne is nervous. She tries to reach out to Tim. She calls his name, but no answer. The lights flicker back on. Tim's a 68 body shows up as it was in the dream. She's at the chat there in horrifying shock, and lets out a scream. She sobbed and slid to the floor. Overwhelmed, she passed out. She wakes up from bed suddenly, once again hung over and holding her head up. Don't drink and drive, kids! This is what happens! You think hangovers are a joke? Her nightmares, quite literally. She realizes something's wrong. She glances at her watch, but it's broken. The time says 2.18, and it won't budge. She unfortunately has to experience this grungy day once again. Grungy. That's a rare, really used word nowadays. She took less time getting out of the bin. She made her way to the kitchen and asked to remember what time it was. 20 blast 11, dear. Throughout the day, Anne paid very close attention to the time in her room. Why don't you like, try staying outside of the room for once and seeing what happens? Although her alarm clock was broken, she nabbed her mother's clock. Her brother knocks on the door at 2.10pm. She notices that her watch's time was upcoming. She goes to hug her little brother and picks him up to bring him to the living room. Though she plays with her brother, she glares at the clock just above the TV. It's 2.17. It clicked at 2.18 and the lights flickered off. The lights turn back on. Maybe we should get a flashlight. She screams at Tim's body. Before she passes out, she looks at the clock and sees 2.19. She wakes up from her bed suddenly, once again hung over and holding her head up. I'm stuck in a time loop. What's going on? She's assumed that the time when she wakes up is from 11.20ish to 2.17 to figure out what's going on. Something needs to be done this time, but I really should get my coffee. So not only is this a no drinking and driving commercial, this is also a coffee commercial. When you're stuck in a time loop and your siblings are dying, what do you go for? The phone to call the 911? A gun? Maybe a flashlight to catch the killer of your brother? No. Go for not Folgers in your cup coffee. She sat in her room just until all the guests arrived and settled in. She knows it's 12.30pm. Prior to the guest's arrival, she's been thinking long and hard what to do. It's time to investigate. I'm only, I've gone through this loop every time with you, and like by the second loop I already knew what to do. Come on, you can step it up. After witnessing your brother die several times investigating what you can, you learn that you really are in a time loop, unable to escape from its grasp. You've tried several different attempts to save Tim. Or if it was putting him in a different room and locking the door, taking him outside on a car ride, oh wow. Or completely canceling the birthday and sending everyone home. Nothing worked. It would always end in Tim dying in the living room and you passing on 2.19pm. How does he get back to the living room after being driven away? Maybe you deserve this for being hung over the day before his birthday. And maybe you deserve this for not being the best sister you could have been. There's no giving up yet. What to do? What to do? Wait. You do recall something. 
Tim was once found dead in the dining room instead, and in his... You sighed. What caused that? Anyways, you think there's no way to escape. But there has to be a way to continue on. I should just play with Tim. Give him the best birthday I can. It's the least I can do after all of this. My precious brother. He doesn't deserve this. She tears up a bit. How much I can do in my own room? Gosh, it's so messy. Alright. So let's save. So I think this game has about five to six endings. Um, so we're going to be doing this loop quite a bit. Makeup kit. Cat Nyan. Watch finishes the day. So I think we go to the watch to like after we're done with preparations. So we got the makeup kit. Let's leave. I guess I'll be seeing this a lot. Kitchen, living room. You say I don't need anything from the bathroom. I mean, you can't go to mom's room. That's a little suspicious. There's a lot of people here. Looks like most of the action is in the living room, then. Mickey, Tim, Eric. A Tim and Eric awesome show! Anyway. Interact with the cat. Man, we have we are really cat-themed. Cute fluffy cat. You pet the cat gently. You ready the third cat. You ready the last cat. Let's see what's in the kitchen. Man, there's a lot of cats. Seems most of the adults are hanging out here. Don't think I get much from them if I want to go to Tim have a better day. Ready this cat? Okay, we're ridding all them cats. What do I do with the makeup? Little Nathan is growing too fast. That's a good thing, right? Sorry. Hmm. I feel like you're not sure what to do. What? It's a lot more simpler than you think. Different things will happen depending on how you treat your brother. How do you know this? I'm still not quite sure what you're telling me. You might not, but they will. They? I feel like we probably died, and this is like our last regret. Hey honey, how's the party doing for you? Pretty calm. I'm actually trying to give Tim a really good birthday today. That's sweet of you. How come? Reasons. Just wondering, but what did you get for Tim for his birthday? Oh, just the coolest toys when asking for. Wow, try to upstage me, Marge. She leans in closer. The Nintendo Switch. That's not even out. Stop trying to market so many different products, game. Make sure you don't drink and drive, kids. And after you've gone back home safely after not drinking and driving, get a nice cup of not Folgers and play your Nintendo Switch. Wow, he's most definitely going to scream when he hears about that. He better. I cost a fortune. Huh, darn. I just remembered I didn't get him a gift. Honey, you know Tim. You better tell him now. Oh dear. Okay, let's see. No one's here. Wow, the food looks great. Ruin it. Pick up the cake, pick up the vegetables. Let's pick up everything. We're going to the pack rat ending. The room, dining room, kitchen. Okay. These kids should know how to raise the roof. Oh god. Hmm. Tell me about. This party's really great! Sure looks like it too. When do we get to have cake? Mom told me to be around three. Tim was right when he said his sister was pretty. I'm sorry. Nothing! Tim, I sort of have a confession. Yeah? What is it? I didn't get you a gift for your birthday. Oh. I always look forward to your gifts. I know. I'm sorry. I'll get you one later. I guess. Tim didn't seem pleased. Hey Eric, I was wondering. 
Wouldn't it be cool if you, me, and the kids did a performance for Twim? That'd be awesome. You talk to the other guys and let them know. You. Yes? Let's dance the Tim's favorite song for him with the others. That sounds interesting. Just like you. Right. Mickey's ready. Hey, you want to do a little dance for Tim with the others and I? Hmm. Sure. Great, the signal is... Want to do a dance for Tim? To which song? You know, the one that you all listen to all the time. Backstreet Boys. Oh, I definitely love that dated song. All right. Anyone else? You gave the signal and you secretly told everyone and they all heard it. Everyone stands up in, in, in sync and stands up front of the TV just across from Tim. You and the boys dance and sing Tim's favorite song. Tim's face glue up with happiness. Glue up. Thanks for being here. No problem, little bro. Anything for you. Alright. Anything else can we do? Maybe like in the kitchen? Hmm. Maybe let's go back to my room. What is the makeup for? And the cake and the vegetables. Two seventeen. So we did a dance and we took some items and we also told him that we didn't have a gift. One more minute. He let out a sigh. Two eighteen. The lights go out. After a couple of seconds, the lights go back on. Her face was shocked once again. Tim's poor, colorless body. He lays there out of breath. This is horrible. Why must he suffer? I can't bear this any longer. Nothing you can do but reset. You pass out. Alright. So what else can we do that's different? We danced? We did a lot of things. Let's talk to Tim without talking to anyone else. Maybe we can get him some cake? So let's highlight Tim. Cake? But we didn't blow out the candles yet. Actually, this happens to be the cake brought from our guests. Their birthday cake is ice cream cake. Really? I love ice cream cake. I told mom you did. I got your back. Thanks, Anne. Tim forks up a bite from the cake and smiles happily. Maybe we'll pick up the makeup. Maybe we can give it to somebody. What are you doing? Oh, uh, I'm not quite sure myself. Is your sister giving makeup? Whoa, Tim, really? No, uh, and why did you... Dear me, I'm sorry. Tim looks like embarrassed. I fucked up. Let's just give him everything. Grab everything. That's not Barbara Tim's room yet. So we can get some more contextual things. We can give them more items. What's this? Vegetables, you're a growing kid. Not my birthday, please. No, it's too gross. She's fine whenever. Tim looks uncomfortable. And let's just try finishing the day. It's 2.17. Ooh, well, that's a little different. Anne looked around for Tim. He wasn't here. She entered the dining room to search for him. Her face was unimaginable shock. What? Struggling even to think, you realize this is different. Tim was never executed before. This is horrible. Why must he suffer? I can't bear this any longer. Collapse. So we did something different, and he got his head chopped off in the kitchen. Let's just try giving him the cake and going to sleep. Oh, 
Okay, we did the confession. Do the cake. Give everyone the signal. Do the dance. Let's get the cats ready. Get all these cats ready. All right, let's end the night. Let's see. One more manual outside, lights go out. Let's go back on and look down the sitting room, but Tim wasn't there. He turns around. A face of unbearable shock. Through tears and despair, you realize this is different. So this time, Tim opened the... the damn cube that brings out Pinhead. We have such things to show you. And things did not work out for him because... those are pleasures that should not be experienced by any mortal. Tim was never tortured before. This is horrible. Why must he suffer? I can't bear this any longer. Nothing you can do but reset. We pass out. So we did something different here. Tim, we got tortured. We seem executed, we seem tortured, and we seem die typically. So, we need to get into these other rooms. The bathroom, Tim's room, and Mother's room. I think I forgot the context for that. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to try to do one item per thing and see what triggers it. And if I find a different result, um, or if I can nail it down, then I'll come back and like, do a time skip here. Okay, so I just figured out that the makeup kit does get his head cut off in the kitchen. So let's try. Okay, vegetables. Give him vegetables. And we'll finish the day. Let's see what we get here. His head gets cut off. Interesting. So I think if we give him like one bad thing, like the cake, the vegetables, or the makeup, his head gets cut off. So let's just try giving him the cake. We're gonna nail this down here. We're gonna go straight to sleep. We're gonna watch Tim die again. This is Groundhog Day. He just chokes if you give him the cake. Interesting. So just the cake, he chokes. So let's do the performance. You do the performance. Go to our room. Here's the day. And you do the performance, he gets tortured. No oh man, this is really is Groundhog Day. Oh god. So if we narrow it down, torturing um, is the dance. Uh, and Cake is asphyxiation. Makeup and vegetables by themselves are hit cut off in the kitchen. So we need to get some more. Either certain combinations might do something different.
Got all four cats ready, it's time. I took all four cats with me to put them in Tim's room. She went over to the living room and announced to Tim that she has a cute surprise for him. She leads him into his friends to the door. Open it. This is so weird. What could it be? He opens the door. All the cats were running Tim to play with him. Tim looks very happy. After playing with the cats for a bit, he let them out and everyone returned to where they were. Okay, we did the cat event. That's new. Let's try going to bed. Oh wait, this one's new. This time I did everything good. I gave him the cake. I didn't tell him I forgot his birthday gift. I said to be ignorant on that. I did the cats. I did the dance. So, let's see what happens. Tim's body was not found in the living room. After switching off from Tim missing Anne, Lee, Anne quickly opens the door to his room. Her face was absolute shock. Through tears and despair, you realize this is different. Tim was never hung before. But this have happened because I made him happy as I can. This is horrible. Why must he suffer? I can't bear this any longer. Nothing you can do but reset. You pass out. Okay, so make him fully happy gives him to hang himself. Make him partially happy gets him tortured. Doing absolutely nothing, so far I noticed, gets him asphyxiated. And being a dick to him gets him chopped up in the kitchen. So there's one more, I think, bad end. And there's one good end, possibly. So we need to do a new combination. Maybe we have not been a dick enough enough. Maybe we can be the next level of dick. Let's see if we can do this. Makeup. Let's tell him we screwed up on the birthday. And the veggies. Give him the veggies. There we go. So let's, I think that's all the bad things we can do. So let's go to bed. Oh wait, here we go. No, this is too much. She couldn't force herself to stare at it any longer. Her face was an edible shock. To tears in the spirit, you realize this is different. Tim was never December before. Could this have happened because I made him as sad as I can? This is horrible. Why must he suffer? I can't bear this any longer. Nothing can do but reset. You pass out, but you didn't wake up. You didn't wake up and there was nothing there for you. All this time you had no idea. No idea that you were in a nightmare this whole time. You mean nightmares? No, just one nightmare. What do you mean? Anne. Anne, darling. You're dead. You look at me as if you didn't know. You've been dead this whole time. Since when? Since the accident. Called it. Your friends and yourself all died in a horrible accident at 2.18 a.m. They're all having their 12-hour loop nightmare, too. Why? Why are we having this nightmare? This is what death is, just a series of nightmares. This is your nightmare. Now it's time to wake up. How? It will take time. Darkness. All you see is darkness. Are you still there? I have questions. Yes, I'll be with you for a while. Is Tim dead? No, you are. Does everyone know I'm dead? No, but we'll see them discovered right now. Anity shows you Marge making coffee and focusing on Tim's party. Next shows Tim knocking on Anne's door. Tim asking where Marge where Anne is. She lies saying you slept over. Marge tries to call your cell. No answer. 
Tim was super upset the whole day. They blew out the candles at three. He wished the day was already over. Everyone left shortly after having cake. Marge followed an emergency list of cells a call when needing to contact her children. She calls all her friends' numbers. No answer. Her mother looks stressed. She found one cell. It was the mother of Anne's best friend, Nicholas. She answered. With a shaky and tearing voice. Hello? This is Anne's mother. I was wondering if she was at your home. You didn't... hear? Hear what? Her mother took a huge breath. Along with weeping, she says. Nick. Anne. They got into a car accident. Marge was silent. I'm sorry. They didn't make it. Nicholas's mother began to weep again. Marge drops the cell. She falls over and holds her face. The unbearable force of emotion overwhelms her. She cries and screams and slides to the floor. She lost her daughter that day. Tim steps into the room. Mommy, what's wrong? You just had the worst birthday ever, son. At least you have Folgers in your cup. I mean, not Folgers. March cries more. Mommy? She looks up at what happens to be her only last child. She pulls Tim in and cries holding him. Mommy, you're going to cry. Tim tears up. I'm going to cry too. They cried there for several minutes. This is what happened to your family. Anne was crying the whole time. I can't believe this. This is really how it ends. Such is life, dear Anne. Who are you? Nothing but an entity. Why did this happen again? This is just a mere taste of hell. There could have been so much for you there, but Limbo did you fair. That's all there is to it. Now, Anne, please step through this door. Okay. That concludes Tim's birthday. Rest well, Anne. So that's it for Tim's birthday. Um, I like the concept of this VN and the kind of the Groundhog Day thing in general. There's quite a few of them out there like Higurashi and uh, Yumineko and um, actually there's a lot. But this is one of the first ones I've seen where it's actually part of the main gameplay. Uh, and not just like a linear story where the person just dies and reloops. So in that says I give him credit. I like that kind of thing. You're kind of investigating and doing things and whatnot. Uh, I just wish, like a lot of like little indie games that it's expanded upon, uh, that there was a little more variation and options and stuff to how to do it. And of course, the ending was predictable. I think it's if you've seen any movies like this, you kind of know what's coming. But I enjoyed it. Anyway, so thank you all for watching me play Tim's Birthday. I'll see you guys later. And take it easy.